Namaste and good morning to all of you. Let's start the class with some prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Pardama, Tasmai Shri Guru Venama. Om Bho Bhova Swaha, Tatsavitra Vare Neyam, Bhargo Deva Sedhi Mahi, Diyo Yonaha Prachodayat, Asto Ma Sakdamya, Tamso Ma Jyotir Gamya, Mrityor Ma Amritam Gamya, Om Sehna Vavutu, Sehna Bhunaktu, Sehviriyam Karva Vahi, Teja Svina Vadi, Tamastu Ma Vidvisha Vahi, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. In this class, uh, we are studying uh, Prashan Upanishad and we are uh, in the third chapter. We are uh, the student uh, by the name of Kosalya is asking the question about the prans, the prans. If you remember in the verse number five, where we ended our class, Rishi Pipalad is saying, as a pan dwells in the organs of excretion and procreation, and the pran abides in the eyes, mouth, and nose, in the middle, this is saman functions, distributing the food equally, and the seven flames are fed from it. Okay, so because this student wanted to know the division of the prans or the upa prans, so that's why Rishi Piplad is explaining this. And we talked about what are the seven flames. Seven flames are the seven main holes in our head. Two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, and one mouth. Seven. Okay, so that's what he's talking about. This seven flames emerging through the seven holes in the cranium. That is the expression here. Very scientific statement. We all have these seven holes, and we can see how these flames come out of these seven holes too. Okay, so let's start the class with verse number six of chapter number three. Haridi Hayesh Atmaha Atr Etat Ek Shatam Nadi Nam Tasam Shatam Shatam Ek Kasyam Dua Sapat Ti Dua Sapati Prati Shakaha Nadi Sehestranihi Bhavanti Asu Vyan Sharatihi Haridi. Haridi means in the heart. Esha, this. He means indeed. He Esha. Atma, the soul. Atra means here. Etat means this. Ek shatam, that means 101. Ek shatam. Nadi naam, that means the nerves. Tasam of those. Shatam, and again shatam, hundreds. Ek, ek sankhya of each one. Dwas, dwas saptati, 72. Prati shakha nadi sasrani, in each thousand branch nadis or nerves. Vyan, that is the Vyan. And over before that is Bhavanti Asu. Asu means in these. Bhavanti means are. Charati moves. Okay, see? These words, they look very dif difficult. But when you break them down, these are very simple terms. This Atma is in the heart. 
there three are a hundred and one nerves. Each of them has a hundred branch. Again, every one of these has 72,000 sub branches. In these, the Vyan moves. So that means Vyan moves in our body everywhere. Vyan. So this Atma word over here is used not in the sense of the supreme reality being the all-pervading factor that is located at a particular point in the body. Atma is used over here to denote the ego center. The supreme consciousness which is conditioned by the mind, intellect and body is called the ego center, like a jivatma. This is what he means over here. And when he says the pran resides in the heart, that doesn't mean that pumping heart, blood pumping heart. This heart really means the ego center over here. It's just like it goes everywhere. Because I identify myself with the legs also, the toes also, the hands also, the fingers also. So why he's using the word Atma over here? This is a style of the Rishis. When something very deeply is, uh, this is a Shlok number uh, six in chapter three. To hold the attention of the students, uh, sometimes uh, the teacher uses uh, these terms uh, to make sure that the attention comes back here. Otherwise, Sleepily students just keep on listening and not paying attention. So we see that in a lot of Vedic scriptures, this style. And the word heart is used the same way, the heart. Pure consciousness reflected in the mind is the ego center. And if you say that ego is in the heart, it's almost a saying that my face is in the mirror. Okay? So make sure you understand this terminology. I'm sure by now you do know that. And this verse goes on to inform us that from this heart, 101 nerves branch off. Okay? This is like so many nadis. Thousands and thousands of them. And that's where the pran flows. And we all know that nadis are the subtler than the finest capillaries in the circulatory system in our body. Arteries and the veins, we can detect these days. Nadis, still we cannot detect. It's very subtle. Okay? So they even say they are astral tubes. Sometimes they try to uh, translate that into the English language. Nadi is an astral tube even though there's no physical tube. So, divisions and subdivisions. So, 72,000 branches and then 72 crores, 72 lakh, 10,201. I mean, these are all numbers given. There are so many of them. You cannot really count them. And in this network of nadis, we are told that the Vyan Shakti moves. Charatihi, Vyana, like a permanent cyclone around the structure of a human body, constantly moving. Among many other functions of the Vyana is to keep the circulation of the blood always going, even the minutest capillary. Okay, constantly it's moving and Vyan Shakti is doing its job. Now let's look at the next one, verse number seven. At ekaha udharva udanaha punyen punyam lokam nayati papen papam ubhyam ev manushya lokam. So now he's talking about the udana. At means now udanaha, the udana. 
एंड एक और एक यहा सी अर्थ एक या उधर्वम एक या इज वन बाय वन उधर्व अपवर्ड्स उदाना उदान वायु पुण्यन बाय वर्चुअस डीड्स पुण्य लोकम द वर्चुअस वर्ल्ड पुण्य लोक नयति कैरीज पापेन बाय सिनफुल एक्ट्स पापम द सिनफुल वर्ल्ड उभाभ्याम बाय बोथ एव मींस वेरली मनुष्य लोक हे द ह्यूमन वर्ल्ड दिस इज अगेन through one special nerve the udan ascending leads us upward to the virtuous world by good work good work or good deeds and carries us to the lower worlds by sinful acts and takes us to the world of men when sin and virtues are mixed okay so function of the udan in the in this body is something like a minister of transportation it's like it transports us to certain place once we need to leave this particular structure of our body so udan is the one which provides the fuel or the motive force for the subtle body to move out of the physical structure so it's not only to take us to the dev lok not only to take us to the nark lok just to get out of this body that's why i said it's like a transportation system at the moment of the death when we need to leave for the next to field of activity okay need for the activity we need a field so where to move and who takes us udan takes us so the mind with the intellect when it's divorced from the physical body that means it's released from its cage becomes free to move anywhere it pleases udan pran is the one which functions okay for example if you are sitting over here and we want to go somewhere what do we use the so sitting over here we can use our mind to go somewhere but when we want to just leave this body and go somewhere then udan current is the one which works on udan energy or udan pran okay that is the time when we want to completely re get released from the body that is the time but over here he is mentioning that at the time of the death as a perfect resultant of all the different kinds of thoughts so he is using the punya and the pap over here throughout our body whatever is a fit for us that's where we'll go based upon our own karmas it will take us towards that arena so but the motive force by which the thought reaches its object of thinking is provided by the udan power in us udan power so udan is the cultural resultant gained during our mental life if our thoughts all through our life were low and gross it's almost like a animal instincts selfish wishes low motives certainly the resultant would be a pull on the mind to move towards animal life and that's why the scripture is saying that it is the udan that will lead us to the lower realm of the animal life 
that kind of a life desired by us. But if on the other hand, the thoughts are higher and nobler, the consequent greatness of culture in us would be like a pulling us towards the higher planes of a greater evolutionary status and existence. So whether we go to the Pune Lok or the Pap Lok, but if there's a mixture of that, Punyan and Pav both will come back here again. Because we have been given the power to discriminate what is right, what is wrong. Power to discriminate is not in the animals or in the plant kingdom. Lions must necessarily kill their, kill the other animals like a deer or some other animal instinctively to fill their belly. A tree must unconsciously shelter everyone under its branches. There's no discrimination there. It's incapable of deciding. But as human beings, we can decide. We have been given a higher intellect. So we are at the we have the power of discrimination. We are no more a victim of instincts. So our life has to be used properly. But the principle of, uh, we definitely need to preserve ourselves, preserve ourselves, but uh, go towards the higher level also. So the Udan takes the ego center wrapped up in the subtle body to the higher worlds of a greater happiness or the lower worlds to a greater sorrow according to the balance sheet of our karmas. And we all know that karmas are not just only the physical karmas, they are verbal also and they are in the thought form also. So, but the principle governing the law of reincarnation is hinted over here in this because law of reincarnation is the basis of the Vedic system. Okay. So this is the Udan. Udan. So when we leave from here, from this body, this is the Udan Pran. See, Vyan Pran was functioning everywhere in us. It was doing the circulation of the blood in our entire body. Udan Pran is the one which will take us out of here. Okay? So this is the function of Udan Pran. Let me just uh, tell you the definition again. Uh, he says, through one special nerve, the Udan Ascending leads us upward to the virtuous world by good work and carries us to the lower world by sinful acts. So whether we go to the heavens or we go to the hell or we come back on this earth, it is the Udan, basically. Okay? And takes us to the world of men when sin and virtues are mixed. That's why as human beings, we feel there's some good prarabdha we came up with and some not so good. There's some good days, not so good days. It's a mixture. Paap and Poonya, dono ka mixture as human beings. If we had 100% good, good deeds, we'll be devtas. Some good, some not so good. But Udan Pran is the one which helps us get out of this body. So in simple terms, that's what it is. Okay. So now let's look at the next one, number eight. Aditya ha ha ve bahya pran udyet esh hi enam chakcha Chakshusham pranam anugrihnana 
पृथिव्याम या देवता स एषा पुरुष से अपानम अवश्य भया अंतरहा यदा काशा स समानो वायुर व्याना पतित्य दशान हा वे वैरली बाहे the external prana the prana udatte hai udatte means rising udit eshaha it enam this and he means indeed chakshusham in the eyes pran anugrahana having a graced so anugraha anugraha means kripa grace prithivyam of the earth ya means which devta the god and over here god means the energy so means that esha means this purushasya of a person apana the apan we learned that apan energy avast bhaya having controlled antraha that is a interspace like a between heaven and earth antraha yat means which akasha the ether the space so means that samanaha the saman vayu the air vyanaha vyan the sun is verily the cosmic pran in the eye the goddess earth attracts or controls the upon towards her the space between the earth and the sun is the saman the wind is the vyan we have already seen before i told you that samasti and vyasti is like a microcosm and the macrocosm whatever is inside the same is outside also so first he introduced us the energy inside the subdivision of it now he is subdividing the macrocosm for us okay so whatever is outside is inside vyasti is the microcosm samasti is the macrocosm so there must be in the outer world of totality representing our inner personalities and the activities within us also so the piplad rishi is suggesting here in the cosmos where we can see the same pranic forces the same pranic forces which are functioning inside our body but they are in the outside they are enlarged and they are extended that's why it's called macro and this is like a typical example of upasana 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 is a technique of self integration in the vedic period this these kind of a techniques were very popular so upasana is a method by which we seek to see an idea with a greater message in an ideal okay so that ideal is like a in a simple thing simple looking thing you see something i mean something which looks so insignificant 
but you see something so large in it. That's what the upasana is. So subjectively, the rishis, they have indicated to us the various centers of activity between the structure which we have inside our body. But now he is just telling us outside also the same thing. So God or the energy is not only over here, it's outside too. The same thing Lord Krishna told Arjuna also. I am in the sun also, I'm in the moon also, I'm in the Ganga also, I'm in the people also. I'm everywhere. Upasana and Bhakti, they are the same thing. Because through the Upasana, we reach towards the self-experience. So no matter how the short the Upanishad is, they always bring some kind of a Upasana method for us so that we gain more and more love for that ultimate. Whether we want to call it Brahma or Paramatma or Ishwar or Atma. It's the same thing. So we cannot leave off the Upasana even in the Upanishads. Okay? Through the Upasana, we can have a steadiness in our mind. Or we can trim our intellect properly. Consciously, it needs to be practiced. So attempt to discover the individual in the total. It's like a me in the thee. This is a process of bhakti. So by the mind becomes expanded and then the process of what happens? The dirt flows out. Otherwise we are only obsessed with this body. I see the pran in my body. I see the atma in my body. But over here he is saying the same thing is out there too. It's almost like a, that technique where a cotton is cleaned by carding it. Our generation has seen that. So such a purified mind capable of expanding beyond ordinary capacities can renounce its gross density and it can soar higher and greater heights of God vision and self-experience. This is what he's trying to do over here for us. Visualizing pran over there too, not just pran only inside the body. When he says pran is verily the sun. And this has been discussed in the first chapter where Rishi Piplad explained that the total mind of the creator himself became the pran and the ray. And he explained very clearly that sun is the pran. And over here, he is telling us the pran functioning in the ear, the eye and the mouth with its headquarters located in the head is the sun in the outer world also. So we got to compare this. So the sun reigns in the crown of the world. And pran is located in the topmost point in the individual's physical structure also. Pran. Pran functions in the eye, he told us. And we have seen how the sun as the source of all light is presiding deity of the instrument of vision. And the upon which functions in the pelvic region of the body is like it pushes downward the things which need to be ejected through the body. The power behind that excretion and insemination, it's upon. 
we all know the direction of its flow is a certainly downward. And upon vritti in the cosmic form is what? It cannot be represented better than this gravitational pull by which everything on the globe is attracted towards its own center. And the Rishi says, <laughs> the goddess of earth attracts. He's not just saying earth, goddess of earth, Devta. We call sun also Devta. We are calling earth also a Devta. These are devatas. And after this advice to us, he is telling us a saman. Saman in us, which is in the middle, in the outer world, it's in the cosmic atmosphere. It lies between the sun and the earth. Just like a saman in our body also lies between the pran and the apan. Saman maintains nutrition in us. Healthy life is only dependent upon the saman. Because saman is the one which nourishes every cell in the body. And we also know that in the atmosphere, if the air is pure, it will help us. So it's atmospheric air that upholds life in all created beings. If there's a pollution out there, it's no good life. So if the atmosphere is small, then the vyan in us can be fully identified with the wind in the outer world. Wind. See, just like a vyan in our own body, that vyan is needed. With the help of the vyan, the saman is functioning. Over here in the atmosphere, the wind is needed, and that is vyan. So the method of upasana is not only beneficial to the seeker in expanding himself, becoming subtler, but it gives a vivid and clear map describing the completely objective representation of this highly subjective theme. The earth, the sun, the atmosphere, the wind together give us the picture of the relative positions and functions of the pran, apan, saman, and vyan in us. You understand that now? Let me read it again. Because I find this beautiful verse which puts the outer world and the inner world together. The sun is rarely the cosmic pran in the eye. The goddess earth attracts or controls the apan towards her, the gravitational force. The space between the earth and the sun is the saman. The wind is the vyan. He did not talk about udan here. <laughs> okay. The other four are talked about over here. <laughs> now he's going to talk about udan also. See what a great textbook we are trying to understand. Tejo ha ve udan tasmat upshant tejaha punar bhavam indriye manasihi sampadde manehe tejaha. Teja means the fire. Ha ve verily udanaha udan. Tasmat, therefore, upshant te jaha, those whose fire has extinguished. Manasi, 
in the mind. And punar bhavam rebirth. Indriye with the senses. And sampadya manehe absorbed. Okay. The external fire indeed is udan. Therefore, he in whom the flames are gone out enters another body <coughs> with the senses absorbed in the mind. We talked about uh, this yesterday also a little bit when we were talking about the subtle body. So the external fire indeed is udan. Therefore, in he in whom the flames are gone out enters another body with the senses absorbed in the mind. So fifth upaprana or the fifth category according to the function of the pran is udan. Udan. So in this verse, he is explaining it to us. The udan in the outer world is that energy which supplies the motive power for an ego center with its subtle body to move out of the physical structure to another form. Okay. Nothing in this outer world can be explained this function of udan as well as Rishi Piplad has done it. He said it's a fire. Fire. Fire is invoked on in different occasions by different means and no two flames look alike in the manifested fire. Sometimes the form is different. Sometimes the intensity is different based upon the fuel which we use. As long as the fire is supplied, the fire at the given spot has a manifested shape and it can just provide the purpose for this world. But when the fuel is burnt, <coughs> and the fire finds no more material to burn, it has consumed all that fuel. It passes from its manifested form into unmanifested form. So fire <laughs> element does not go away. It only changes. So similarly, when a subtle body finds that it has no more experience to gather in a given physical form, that the subtle forms throws away its physical structure, this body is no good. It cannot serve its purpose. That udan moves that soul and the subtle body along with it to another body. It departs. And with the reference to the body, this condition is called the death of the body. And we all know that the subtle ego centers set in the subtle body is conveyed to its next field of activity. And he said, it's called like a lok. And the energy called the udan. Udan. And then he says with his senses absorbed in the mind. Senses, these are not the sense organs, but the power behind the senses absorbed in the mind. At the time of the death, it is universally observed that the dying person slowly and steadily loses all the sense activities and capacities also. Can't speak, can't hear, can't see, can't smell. Can't feel. This is 
not because of the in instruments of the cognition have become defective, but the power or the strength of perception, meaning the pranic vitality in the sense organs has withdrawn from the sense organ centers. Okay, so devdas, we are ready to leave. Because he told us that main pran is the shadow of the Atma. So up prans also ready to leave with the subtle body. So over here the Upanishad is explaining that the sense organs, meaning the sense capacities, remember that, are withdrawn unto itself by the mind before the Udan lifts it. Okay, Udan is going to take it, but they all have gone, the, all the powers have gone in it. In, it's almost like a packing everything. If you go to somebody's house or somebody comes to your house, time to go, what do they do? Put their shoes on, pick up their purse, pick up their other things. We know they are ready to leave. Right? The same thing over here, collecting everything, all the powers, <laughs> ready to go. Ready to go. As long as the Udan exists in the human form, the man is alive. So long as the man is alive, there's a body, warmth in it too. Body feels warm. Living body feels warm. When the Udan leaves, the heat, is gone. That body is a cold to touch also. So we can say that that body is a thing in which the flames have died out. The, those flames which were working, they have died out. Or we normally say the fire has gone off. Right? See, look at it, how clearly these rishis they talk about this part of life, which is so certain. Average person doesn't want to, or other philosophies, they don't want to deal with it. But our rishis, from the past, present, future, they know exactly what's happening. What a great philosophy. I wanted to finish this, but somehow, there are three more verses, so we'll continue with this next time because I know you have a lot of questions also. So let's do the Shanti Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachyate Purnase Purnamadaye Purnam Eva Vasheshyate Om Shanti 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 Om. Thank you very much.